What is going on, guys? Today is Dustin. We're making another video for this channel. And today we are making Book Talk Episode 4. I just want to make a quick note that we had a special episode planned for Episode 4. And I've been trying to work on it, Chance, if you're watching this. I really am working on it. I'm almost done with it. I just don't know why every time I get done making... Putting them all together, just the whole video just turns out black. It's dumb because it's a good episode. So I'm still trying to work out the issues, even though it's a week later. Still saying, I'm still saying, staying true to that promise of having you in an episode. But for now, I feel we need to move on with the show and make episode four of why everything you knew about Jameson is a lie. So, I watched back the uh, episode 3 to see where I left off, because I didn't remember. And here we go. Right about there. He walked to the normal hangout spot. And there, they were. Sorry, quick drink. <clears throat> there they were. Wilson's friends. Gavin. Was always happy to see everyone, yet no one ever noticed how happy he was. Every day was a constant smile because he believed he had a purpose to fulfill in life. Gavin always had the same smile on his face and always. And always, no one would ever like Wilson needed more. Wilson needed him more than he knew it. He was an amazing friend to Wilson. Then, there was Jack. He only knew one emotion. And that was sadness. Every time Wilson saw Jack, he never had a smile on his face. Nothing ever made him happy, and he never said why. Wilson lived with it. They were good friends. Wilson needed him in his life. He needed all of his friends, but Gavin had a special place with them because of the smile he brought. Because of the smile he brought every day, no one noticed any of them. They liked to be left alone because people were just mean. Then there was Jacob. Good old Jacob. His life was made up. Hold on. I... One second. I may have just made the biggest mistake in this whole book. Sorry, I, I know I'm here to read the book, but I introduced Jack as a sad person. And I also introduced this Jacob character as a sad person. It's okay. I guess it honestly kind of upsets me that I don't ever read over my work. I just like to get shit done. Uh, then there's Jacob. His life was made of blah blah blah. Shut the fuck up. Second to lastly, there was Daniel. Now the interesting thing about Daniel was the boy was surprised about everything. Every day the same old thing surprised him. It made Wilson wonder why. Wilson never questioned it. He lived with it. And they became great friends. Lastly, there was Annie. She was an interesting character. She, sh she showed anger to everything. It's what she did as a human. Jameson sighed as the commercial came on. It showed the police looking for a man named Tyler. Jameson 
chose, chose to ignore it. Before he knew it, the show was back. So, those were Wilson's friends. He loved them. He felt incomplete without them. They all looked up in unison as the bell rang for first period. Well, see you guys later, I guess, Wilson said. The walk was the walk was like usual, short and boring. A nice five minute walk to the other side of the high school. As Wilson walked to the front door walked through the front door and found his seat, a sharp pain shot through his head that made that made him almost cry. It happened regularly. Yeah, he didn't know what they were. Every time he was away from his friends, they happened. But when his friends were nearby, they never happened. First period went by fast, and before Wilson knew it, he was walking home. The big time jump through six more periods. But this isn't the real story you should focus on. All you missed... All you missed was classes and schoolwork, the boring stuff. Now Wilson's house. Now Wilson's house was not the fanciest on the block. He walked. He walked up and opened the front door. After school, he just shut down. He only ate what he really needed. He only ate when he really needed it. Straight up to his. Straight up to his bedroom and into the covers, he simply passed out. Wilson woke up to a six o'clock alarm. His daily chores took him about a half hour. And after that, and after that, he had a half an hour before he'd arrive at school exactly at seven. So he sat down on his bed and waited. The clock ticked slowly, minute by minute. And it was 6.45. He started the 15-minute walk to school, and again, it was at school, something different. He didn't know what, but he felt it in the air. Usually, there was a vibe in the air, a good vibe in the air, but the air was thin. Wilson spaced it off, but today was when he psyched few when he tripped to the zoo. Him and his friends, they would be leaving when the first bell rang. To fast forward time, Wilson was now on the bus with his friends. Now the thing about the zoo is that it isn't the safest place. Lots of accidents have been reported, but yet they were because of. But yet they were. Well, lots of accidents have been reported, but they were there. Because they won it on with perfect attendance. The front gates were rusty and creaked every time they moved. A man named Thomas came from out the shadows. Welcome to the zoo, Thomas said. Wilson spaced off everything he said. But he didn't know what was coming. Now comes the fun. They all walked together in unison. No one noticed that Annie was not with the group. Reading this makes me cringe work makes me realize that this whole book is just cringe worthy. Let's get back to the story about Jameson. The I know I probably shouldn't skip that story, but yeah, okay. Let's get back to the story of Jameson. I want you guys to be knowing about Jameson because this episode isn't going to be that long. Basically, the girl Annie ends up dying in the zoo. And everyone's so sad about it. And I pretty much fucked up the whole story. 
And the next day, all his friends have no idea who Annie is. And I never actually did finish that story. There is, that is actually a full story that gets good. But that full story is in here. This was Jameson's favorite show. He needed to leave. Back to my dad's house, he whispered, walking out the front door. Jameson was no longer the young kid on the block. He was rich and in charge, well, soon to be rich. Killing his mom was not an easy task. And it hurt him. As much messed up as this, as this sounds, part of him felt happy. His mom was dying. And Jameson killed her, it's like, fucked up. I don't know why I wrote that. Jameson's job always came first, but he used to make an exception for family. No more than a half hour later, and he was there. Jameson's father was waiting in the living room. Welcome back, and did you finish your job? His father said, yes, I learned my lesson, but it was hard, a hard thing to do, Jameson replied. Jameson walked up to the wall and put an X to, the mo to his mom's picture. After Jameson did that, he handed back the gun to his father. Jameson took the conversa com conversation straight to straight to the point. The money. Jameson said, I am a man of my word. But, Jameson hated butts, not actual butts, B-U-T-T-S, but the response people used when they promise you to do something, they say, well, you can, but, it was never a simple answer, it was always more, it was always a catch. Jameson, I'm a man of my words. But there is a problem, his father continued. I may be your father, but I have to look out for myself too, Tyler said. I make choices that will benefit everyone, and well, I'm sorry, Tyler continued. Jameson had just killed his mom and didn't even know why. The money, it was a lot of money, and he wasn't. He had the feeling he wasn't going to be getting paid. The one person that loved him the most was gone and should never come back. Jameson, Jameson didn't know the exact story between his mom and his father, but he knew it didn't end on good terms. They had, one, they had once all been a family a long time ago, when Jameson was younger and still in school. His father was evil. He was a devil. You said, if I took her out, I would get paid, Jameson said angrily. Well, some people lie, and some people tell the truth, his father replied. I needed her dead. You'll understand when you're older, Taylor said. I have nowhere to live now, and my mom is dead. Jameson shouted, You can live here. I have a spare bedroom down the hall. Tyler said, I have no other options. I have to move here. Those gunshots were loud. Any on the, anyone on the block could hear it. Jameson said, Forget your stuff. We can buy you some new stuff. The cops are probably at the place as we speak, Tyler said. Jameson had to choose the street, the streets or this place. And on top of that, he didn't have any money. Jameson didn't understand why he wouldn't be getting paid. And why he actually did kill his mom. Okay, can I see this room? 
Right this way, boy. And it's the first door on the left. He walked to the door on the left and opened it slowly. Jimson was surprised because the room was actually not that bad. There is a bed, bigger than his old one. It might not be that bad, Jameson thought. Listen, son, Tyler said, the money is in a safe place. I swear, and you aren't ready for that kind of money. We are talking about $10,000, and that is a lot of money for a young boy. What no one realized is that Jameson isn't a young boy. He's... Well, that's what he thought. Jameson hated it when people called him a young boy. I understand that's not easy, but there's more to her than you know. The only, the only time will tell. Now get some sleep. Jameson didn't reply, but went straight into his new room and landed straight on the bed. He fell asleep sooner than he expected. The bed was more comfortable, and the room was dark. The night was long, and every minute dragged on. Tick. Tick. The clock hit 7 a.m. Jameson woke up with his eyes squinted because of the sun shining through the sky. With the sun shining through, Jameson could see his environment a lot better. The room was surprisingly nice, like Jameson said the day before. And it really honestly was a lot better than its old bedroom. There was a bed in the far corner and a desk in the other corner. Jameson walked across the room and opened the closet. Clothes were still in there. That made Jameson wonder who was here before him? Who else did Tyler trick, potentially ruin their lives? That would remain a mystery to Jameson, and he didn't want it to know the answer. For now, he had to worry about this, his life, and survive. He walked out of the room and found his father in the kitchen. The food smelled good, and that made Jameson think he hasn't woke up to a cook meal in a long time. His son, you hungry? Tyler said. Without answering, he sat down, and he started eating the food on the table. Jameson was surprised the food was good. Thanks for calm. You know she was right. You know she was sick, right? Jameson decided to start off with the conversation. Son, we're all sick of something. Tyler responded. Jameson didn't respond because he figured it'd be better off. He finished his food and put the dishes in the sink. Okay, let's talk about work and how the contracts will be going, Jameson asked curiously. I'll give you a couple days off to recover and we'll get you some new some new things. Tyler responded. We're going to end it there for today. I still got other videos to make, and I'm still working on that special episode. That'll be all for right now. Thank you guys.